What's going on? It's your host, Deshaun Jones, one half of MB Online. And his partner, Azar Johnson. What we on, man? Episode seven or eight? Eight. This we, is eight. We racking them up, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> As you know, for the people that's following us and that's going to watch this on a playback, we cover mm-hmm. a variety of topics from sports, hip hop, fashion. For this particular podcast, we're going to touch on some college football. Now, for those who don't know, we cover the CAA football conference. So we're going to talk a little bit about CAA football. Then we're going to go into some NFL stuff. And we got some hip hop news. Mm. So how you want to get this started? Uh, let's go where, where we're appreciated. <laughs> let's go. Where That's always good, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So let's start off with CAA football. Correct. Now. We discovered you, Albany, but do you mm-hmm. want to touch on the other teams and stuff that's going on in the CAA conference? Yeah, let's let's start with you, Albany. Okay. We will, and then we'll go to the other teams. To, you know. Okay, so we just had you, Albany, versus uh, Central Connecticut State University. Great game. You, Albany, got their first one of the season at home. What was the score on that? 45-26. 45-26. You, Albany, for a second straight game, has put up 45 points on the offensive end. They mm-hmm. did that the week prior. I don't want to say the week prior, but when they faced Fordham, they put up 45 points and a tough loss. But you, Albany, starting to show that they can compete with other teams that have high-power offenses. Now, the game started off crazy. First drive of the game, Todd Sibley. 97 yard run literally on the first drive of the game first for, play first yeah, play yeah, of yeah. the game for a touchdown mm-hmm. one thing i want to say is man that kid has put in a lot of work in the offseason in the show he's on a tear the game before put up a lot of yards a lot of touchdowns this game out the gate touchdown you know there's a lot of angles to touch on it now you talked about some stuff that you <clears throat> saw that you liked and disliked mm-hmm some stuff that they improved on. So we're yeah. going to get into that. Okay. So basically um, what I saw in the game from, from you, Albany, um, is that offensively, I like that they could, they were able to, you know, do their thing. Like they really, they came out the gate. It wasn't a catch up game because mm-hmm. I felt like sometimes in games they were catching up and like for whatever reason, they got a slow start and then they would catch up and then they would just play the way that we knew and expect them how to play. Now, on the flip side of things, then it would become something where it would be, um, you know, it, it, it would just, it just wouldn't end, it would end, wouldn't end well. Because either by the time you don't caught up, now the team is adjusted and now you got to figure that out. So with, with this case, um, you know, they came out the gate, they swung. And then I think what was concerning to me, even though that they, they answered, they shut them down. They made defensive plays. So let me start with the strengths because you, you did tell me you start with the strengths. Yeah, man, let's talk about the good stuff, man. They got their win. They did a 97-yard touchdown run, right, first mm-hmm. play of the game. They they established a running game. They were able to use their weapons to get downfield and, 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 and methodically move down. Shout out to Julian did. Hicks and Thomas Greeny. Correct. Um, and they did their front seven did a lot of damage as far as, like, getting to the, the quarterback. Um, that that was the good news. The good news, it, you, you kind of they did what we expected them to do, okay. what they're capable of doing. So if they do that, and they come out and swing, then like I said, it's one game at a time. And who knows where they can go? Do you want me to keep going, or because I'm about to? Do go we got some bit. more good news, man? I mean, we got some more good. news. Well, Poffenberger. You got to talk um, about your boy, man. That other quarterback. Come yeah, on, Joey, now. Joey Carino. That who we got to show him some. Who love. everybody, who everybody thought was going to be the starter. And for whatever reason, I you know, there's something that they saw during training camp that they made Poffenberger the starter, but, which is not a mistake. But Poff, it was Carino came in even on short yardage goal game, goal yard um, situations, and he scored. Put up two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. All twice he he ended up getting in the end zone, um, and that's not that's not easy to do. Now before we now before we go forward, because mm-hmm. I know you got a lot to say, and I don't want to interrupt you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Do you think? That works best for you, Albany. Now that they got like a another quarterback weapon, who showed that he can not only score on. I don't want to call that a wildcat offense, but mm. they got another dynamic weapon there. Now we saw Stony Brook try that with two quarterbacks, and how mm-hmm. did that work out? 
Um, well, their their score is fifty one to seven. To, so so now no. we saw you Albany do that, and mm. they're playing, they're gelling. Yeah, like I didn't yeah. see any confusion. That's what yeah. I wanted to get to. Yeah. Well, Coach made a good comment at the in the press conference. He said that Carino, you know, during the quarterback um, competition, he handled it well when the news was let out that Poffenberger was going to be the starter. So that says a lot about his his, his good, um, character, good maturity. Yeah, and then he comes out in the game and he scores twice in short yardage goal. So that makes him, you know, definitely, um, you know, just a valuable asset. Come down and come down to young because I, I I don't think he's a senior yet. So I think he, he'll be there for a while. Okay, you know what I mean. So yeah, he'll 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 be there for a while, and um, you know, when this is all said and done, he 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 can be doing whatever he's doing and and it's going to work out well and you know he'll be a even more threat down the line go ahead i'm sorry no that was it on my end all right so um on the flip side of things i think what concerned me about it and, and we're talking about everything in this game what concerned me was was when it seemed like central connecticut state did what a lot of teams do they did what they wanted to do at what they can do best that's, let me make that clear. So when you ask me that, my whole thing is they kind of effectively and methodically ran down the field. When 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 Sibley went and scored that touchdown, the next drive went for seven minutes and 33 seconds. That means they methodically moved down the field. They didn't have a deep threat. They didn't have a guy that could go. They, they had, a, they, they they had got, a running back by the name of Nas Smith. Yeah, and, 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 and Nasir Smith, right. We ran for 110 yards, and they got a receiver in Eric Eric Surratt. Yeah, he's he can he can break it at any point, but it's not it's not at every play. It's not like Fordham. Fordham can just get down the field every 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 play. Um, but with them, they got that one guy, and then they got Nasir with the running. So they they played to their strengths, and it was working until there was mishaps. And then you know also this bus long on that front seven. You can't just keep trying to run down their throat and methodically move down the field, they're going to get to you. So I think that they did a great job of doing that. That's also a plus two. But it's still still some some concerns about how they were able to methodically get down the field. And let me tell you this, the one thing, they were, even though you Albany was up, I don't want to say, what was the score at one point? It was, it was right after halftime. They were up by a certain a certain number of points, right? 12 to 24. Right, 24 to 12. Okay, right. No, I hear 24 to 12, correct. 24 to 12, right? They were going to go for a flea flicker, Central Connecticut State. The minute that flea flicker went south, that was the end of the game. That was the game. I mean, you both saw what happened. Yeah, and, and what was crazy about it, they had the right play. They just couldn't execute it, and it was because of the front seven. You know the front four. Can you break that down? Because you, you was you was talking about something that you brought to my attention that I didn't see. Like they did the flea flicker and the and everybody bit. The guy was wide open down the field. So it, that's what you want you refer yeah. to. Yeah, he was wide open down the field because I was on the up. other end. Yeah, and he he was wide open, but they couldn't get him because the pressure was so crazy and they broke up the play. That's the strength of their front seven. That's what you want me has to do. I think what's concerning though is that teams are able to do what they plan out to do, just Central Connecticut State wasn't consistent. And by the time they fell so far behind, I mean, it didn't really matter. You know what I mean? And, but, the, but you know, it, you know, it's a give and take. You got your first win. Central Connecticut State couldn't stop you with Greeny and Wilkes and Sibley and Poffenberger and Carino. They, you couldn't stop all those guys. There was too many. Can we throw a little correction in? Yes. He said greenie. We got to say greenies, plural, too. Greenies, yeah. Because it was a yeah. highlight where yeah. I, I want to say this was the play of the game. And even though that Joseph Greeny ran it in, and mm -hmm. shout out to Joseph Greeny because I saw online that um, I want to say he was voted, I want to say, athlete of the week. Okay. I got to look at, at that on Twitter, but he, he got some academic athletic mm -hmm. awards. Mm -hmm. But um, there was a play where – it was third down or fourth down, and their pressure just made the quarterback fumble. Yeah. And Joseph Greeny picked it up, ran it back for, I want to say, 77 yards. Facts. That was a hell of a defensive play by their whole defensive team, but hell of a play by Joseph Greeny. Right. And and, and, and that was that was another nail. So my, my whole thing is just, you know, that front seven is lethal, but I think the concern is, is that back four. And I think you all need the defense accordingly. It's always easier to say it's sitting from here than it is from there. But, you know, 
when you got a team like Fordham or you got a, or you jump up on a team like Central Connecticut State, you're gonna have to drop those linebackers. They gotta drop. They get they can't they can't stay up there. They get, because at the end of the day, you just gotta have faith that you gotta you can get to them with four. I saw other teams in the conference. They was getting to the, they was getting to other teams with three three linemen. You just gonna have to take the faith and trust it. Because it's you can't. I mean, the fact that I mean they they, they scored twenty six. It wasn't relevant at that point, but. They did. They got enough stops to get ahead of the game and keep the lead. That was what they played. They played to the strength of their defense, and I'm hoping during this bye week that the Army has that they see that because you got a Hampton team that just came off a, a, a really bad loss, 35 to three. So, so they're and they, be hungry. they and they took their first loss of the season. So I'm pretty sure in their bye week they're kind of real agitated and they're ready to get back in there and prove that you know this three and zero run wasn't a, wasn't a fluke. You know. So yeah, and they they like to, they got a mobile quarterback. It's it's not like the quarterbacks they've been facing. They, those those that guy back there likes to run around. And let me say this: that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. One thing that I've seen, good or bad, with you Albany, they have had problems stopping a run. Right. Not Sarah Smith ran all over them. Um, what was the the um guy from New New Hampshire? That D- D- Dylan, Dylan or Dylan? Dylan Lou. Dylan Lou. The, that running move, back yeah. was able to get whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. So when you have a m- mobile quarterback that has weapons, mm-hmm. you're going to have to construct your defensive defensive theme around that. Can you break that down of what do you think defensively that you Albany should do because they haven't quite faced a mobile quarterback this season as efficient as the one on hand? They're, they're going to have to either rush three and keep the fourth guy in as a spy and 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 run with that, or they're gonna have to rush four and drop seven, or rush four and keep a, a fifth guy as a spy in, and then and then drop, drop six. six. Yeah. So I, I mean they're gonna have to figure it out. But if I was them, I would drop. I would drop the, like play to your coverage. Keep your linebackers underneath and keep your cover corners and your safeties on top. Like nobody can get past them. If you want to sit back there and get underneath them, you can try all day. But at some point with that offense, that's not going to work. <laughs> you Albany, we giving you gems. Yeah, we not the coaches, but yeah. might want to pay <laughs> yeah. attention. Right, right, right. I think um, and and I, I think I wrote the notes down. So like um, Sim, Simon, Greeny, Hills, Lang, Missler, Ambush, and Kelly are all you know part of the front seven on the U Albany defensive line. Is those guys are clicking, and if they're if they're getting beaten, in other words, when they get a lead and you just let them tee off, and you just you gotta trust. In other words, because if I'm not mistaken, you only defense play three four. I, most of their scheme, I see three four linemen. If you got it, just just take take the take the three linemen and trust that they're gonna get to that rush and drop your four linebackers. Just drop them. Somebody's gonna get to them one way or the other. Your line is clearly, especially when they got a lead, your line can can penetrate. So just continue to do what you do, learn from what you got, and you know they're in a, they're in the foxholes one and three. So we're gonna see. And remember, I think I predicted. Now I know you you had higher hopes. I I I kind of said that they'll Five have a win. Yeah, they'll have a winning season. But I I think that you know playoffs. Let's let's put it like this. I wouldn't be surprised they make it to playoffs, but it's gonna take a lot to do. You get what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. with, with everything that's going on and what the gem is, is that coach Gatto made a point of, he said, um, you know, he said, James Madison left. So every, every, everybody's got a chance now. So it's, it's not just James Madison, everybody else. It's everybody else right now. Okay. So you want to get into some news from the other CAA teams about what you expect? Well, what I was looking at and I was looking at some of the games and I, and I was clearly watching some of the top games. Let me, let me start with some of the top teams. So right now, I think New Hampshire's in the front. Delaware is right behind them. Um, who else is there? There, Richmond's in that top four with them, and there's somebody else I'm missing out of here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Look, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, there's there's three teams I was watching. I apologize. You all me was one of them clearly. Um, let me start with Delaware, and even though they're in second place because they even though they're undefeated. They don't have as many conferences, so I think they're right behind New Hampshire, who's three and one. Delaware is kind of a team. They got a new coach, a 
and Ryan McCarty. I'm, if I'm if I'm hoping I'm saying your name right, if I'm not, I apologize. They got two conference wins. They got two conference wins, right? So they they got a new team. They got a new coach. I mean, what's impressive about them is they were one of the three teams in the conference that got a win over the Division One team, and that was Navy. And okay. if anybody knows, Navy's in the AAC, which consists of Cincinnati, who was in the top four in the championship games last year. So that's the type of conference team they were playing. It's like playing Vanderbilt in the SEC. They may not be at the bottom, but they go anywhere else. They're gonna get. They're gonna punch them in the face. You get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. they got that win. What I saw. Let me start with what I saw in that game. They were playing Townsend, and it just. They were in Townsend. They they scored. I think it was literally 28 to nothing by the second by the first half. By the time by the time halftime it was 35 to seven, and. It just was something that it just looked like dominance. And I th- think that the ending score was um, 35 to 3. So I'm sorry, not not Townsend. I apologize. Hampton. I'm, I'm thinking about New yeah, Hampshire. You, New Hampton. Hampshire played yeah, Townsend. Yeah, yeah. Hampton, it, was, it, it ended up being, it ended up being, um, they, they, they ended up beating them 35 to 3. Hampton, why it was an impressive win, Hampton's been 3 and 0. So they was 3 and 0 like Delaware. What makes Delaware impressive is that they done beat another undefeated team. Rhode Island was undefeated, and they sent them home with a loss. And they beat Rhode Island in Rhode Island. And, yes, they did beat Delaware. They beat um, Hampton in, in their own home. But they sent Hampton home, you know what I'm saying, with a loss, their first loss. So what's impressive about them is what I wanted to talk about. The team's defense, I don't think it gets enough. If you look at it, um, what I have some stats here, so I'm, I'm going to yell some stats. They kept Navy's um, quarterback to passing for 135 yards, and the team and the leading rusher had 47 yards, and that was it. And then Kasim Hill, who's who's a known a oh, known yeah. threat, known weapon in Rhode, Rhode Island, Island, he only passed for 179 yards, 79 yards passing. He only got 65 yards, and he only in his two running backs in the backfield only ran for 40 yards on 12 attempts. That's what they did to Rhode Island. And for Delaware State, they did the same thing, 35-9. to nine. The quarterback was only passing for 153 yards. He ran for 11 attempts for 53 yards. And then Hampton, the quarterback, who's very mobile, passed for 94 yards and an interception. The leading rusher had seven carries for 23 yards. What that tells me is two things. They, they've never given up a 100, 100-yard 100 rusher. They've never given up a 200-yard-plus passing game. And to be honest with you, you're, you're, you're a good defense if you keep the, the, the quarterback under 300 yards. A quarterback hasn't passed for 200 yards yet in four games straight. That's called lockdown defense. That's defense. And it's like before you even score, it's like they gave it to you. I'm going to use a quote from – anybody ever watched the show Billions? I'm going to use a quote for the, 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 the therapist that, that was talking to the billionaire. She said to ask Rod, he said, well, I won this fight with, with um, what was the guy's name? It was another billionaire competing with in his hometown. He wanted his hometown block. And the therapist said, oh, you won that? Really? You think you won that? Or did he just give you that? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the equivalent of what Delaware does sometimes. They kind of, they do what other people do when they're up on a lead. They kind of let you, you know, come down the field. But even then they're locking people down. So when you look at scores, that's 14 to 7. 42 to 21, 35 to 9, 35 to 3. I mean, it's it's just dominance. You want to cue up the Akon song? <laughs> yeah. Moses Styles P. They got them locked, locked up. up. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. It, it, a, another note too. Um, and if you look at it, they they have a they have a uh, it's like a theme. Um, they kept Hampton scoreless in the fourth quarter. Was up 28 to nothing. The same thing with Delaware State. They was up 28 to 3 before they scored in the fourth. And Rhode Island was down by 35 to 7 by halftime. So that means Rhode Island couldn't score until they got lean out into the fourth quarter. In other words, what I'm saying is. And that's big because having, we saw Rhode Island. Rhode having, Island is a yeah. dynamic team with many weapons, offensively and defensively. And they're having problems. They were having problems. So that's bad. That's real bad. I mean, for for the, the opposing teams. So Delaware is a team that has clearly made their stake. I will say this, and what I think people don't want to admit, 
when James Madison left, everybody was looking at Villanova because Villanova for the past two or three years has been a team. They've been, you know, they've been right there. But, you know, James Madison is a top team. When James Madison left, everybody thought Villanova was going to take over. They got beat by Monmouth. So they're two and two. It's a long season. We still got seven more games. But Delaware is looking like a team that's just, and it's just crazy because they're new. They got a new coach. They wasn't supposed to be doing this. At least it wasn't expected. I'm pretty sure in that locker room they, they expected, but now, they wasn't. They have a new be. coach, but educate me on their team. Do they have a lot of returning players? Because if um, they built in that culture, I understand yeah. that coaching is important. Yes, but if they build in that culture and they got a lot of returning players that are correct juniors, mm-hmm. man, that might be already built in, man. Yeah. So salute to Delaware for that. They do. So the, the other team I want to mention too is New Hampshire. Okay. And I just want to mention, we're just going to go with their game. Because um, we saw, we saw they, they just recently came off a loss with North Carolina Central, which shots out to them because they, they came in and they went up to New Hampshire, a meek HBCU meek conference team. They went up to New Hampshire and they beat them. And they, they beat them very decisively. Um, and the thing about New Hampshire, what impresses me, and with Santos, first of all, he started off the game with an onside kick and got it. They they didn't they they started the game with an onside kick. That means they wanted to smoke. They 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 they, want, they, they, they came out wanting they that smoke. They came in boy. swinging, and I don't know what it is. I saw this when we was covering them for the U Albany game, and I saw them. I saw this when they was um, when I was watching the game for for the was it Townsend? Yes, Townsend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they come in, and it's like you know what they gonna do. They can't get deep. North Carolina Central was daring them to go deep. And they, they, because they knew, and I think they got deep once or maybe a few times. But see, North Carolina Central knew you can't keep this up. You can't keep this up. So, anyway, long story short, they go in there and they start beating up on them. Um, I think Dylan Lobby, Lobby, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. I swear I got it. I just keep it to Dylan. Okay, Dylan. He ran for 23, 23 attempts for 114 yards. He ran a punt back for a touchdown. Um, and once again, New Hampshire keeps having this thing too. They, I mean, the three and one, right? You know what impressed me? They were up by the end of the third quarter. They were up thirty-one to seven. So even though, even though they, um, what was this, the final score? I think it was thirty-seven fourteen. That means. <laughs> They scored at the end of the third quarter. Townsend did, right? They never scored again in the whole fourth quarter. 31-7. to seven. Their defense, even though I'm pretty sure on a national level, they don't all jump out. You can't get deep on them. You, you, you seem to, I don't see too many people running for 100 yards on them. Um, but they, they, just know, they, they just know how to play defense. They, I mean, they, they, they once again, and what I'm noticing is a trend. The teams that are holding are playing defense. They slowly start to build leads. Delaware slowly built the lead. I mean, they, they scored a lot, but they, they were building the lead. It's the same thing with New Hampshire. They built the lead. So, you know, they kept building a lead. And before you know it, the, I mean, it's like, and even with their, the way they run their offense, it's methodical. They, 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 they chip away, chip away, chip away. They take deep threats when they, when they think there's an opportunity. And before you know it, they down the field. They can start at the 20-yard line, and when you look up about five minutes later, they're, like, down there by the 35-yard line. Then they're down there by the red zone, and then they're scoring a touchdown. And you're like, what the hell is that's this? What you, that's mm-hmm. what you allude to when you say methodically moving down the field. Yeah, they just keep pushing, keep pushing. They keep running, and they're doing it on all phases of the, of the game. So, I mean, they didn't have an answer. They went away and then went into another person's stadium and won the game. Um I think what was impressive is that they that they bounced back after the loss to North Carolina Central, because I think last year they started three and zero and then they lost eight straight. I don't think with Santos that's going to happen. That's they're, they, the way this guy is coming in. He's coming in with an energy that's pumped and ready and like we are ready to fight. You get what I'm saying? So um, you know, I I think that you know New Hampshire is is gonna, you know, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and and and. They're going to be one of those teams at the end, too, I, I think. Because it's going to be hard to go up there and beat them. You don't want to be up there in December trying to fight. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, let me say one more Mount of Bermento, and I'm, I'm going to say, and this ain't really good news. 
I'm not I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. Richmond played in their three and one. And they played Stony Brook. They beat them fifty one to seven. It is starting to look bad in Stony Brook. I don't know what I know they lost their, their quarterback. I know Fiori's trying to figure it out who he's got. It's bad. When it's fifty one to seven, that's bad. Like what I saw from New Hampshire and what they did, it was bad. But this is just it's been bad from day one. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, 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 you know, you know, Delaware went in there and they was playing an undefeated team in Hampton. They were undefeated. So it wasn't like it was bad. I mean, Hampton just got beat bad, but they had a bad game. It seems like with Stony Brook, it's consistent badness. So, I mean, the last time we went down there, which was open at night, he said, we're going to have to figure it out. I hope you do. I really do hope you do. Because if, if you don't, I don't I don't know how you, I mean, it, it's, we, what are we, week four? Yep. We're in week four. And so now we're going into week five. When this airs, we, week five is either going to have happened or we're already going into it. I don't know what you're going to do. Because I'm looking at this conference, I can't even, we can't keep our eyes on everybody. But from the top tier to top four, you're not getting up there. That defense alone is is not playing. And they're doing this against guys that normally are getting like a lot of yards. They're figuring it out. They're figuring it out. Like that's what you want to do. You want to pass, whatever. And, and, and what makes it, things I keep saying, they say, well, why, are you, why are you so impressed with some of these top teams? Because they're beating you down. Like they, they're up 31-7 to seven and you still can't score. So they imagine now you playing a team that ain't that good, and you jump on them. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a yeah, it's I'm a looking world at of that mess. Fifty one to seven. That's that's ugly. Yeah, that that's that's really bad. So I I think that they need to understand like this is you know this might be a long season for them. This might. That's all I'm gonna say. Not the season's not over. It's just gonna be a long one. However they want. It's like you Albany's gonna have a long one. They gotta figure out how they they're they're trying to figure gotta it out. Build on top yeah. of that win. Yep. Yep. So that you know, we'll see. And they said they, they at the end, you know, God saw how that team competing. Can I bring up um some awards from the CAA? Yeah, of course. Go All right. So we got to shout out the student athletes. Um, this is coming directly off the CAA website as a source. Four CAA football players named semifinalists for a prestigious Campbell Trophy. Main graduate student offensive lineman Michael. I want to say his last name is Grace or Grace. Mm-hmm. New Hampshire senior defensive lineman Nico. Stony Brook graduate offensive lineman Kyle Nunez. And William and, Ma- William and Mary since senior defensive lineman Carl Flower were amongst 156 semifinalists announced by the National Football Foundation as runners up for that trophy. So shout out to the student athletes. Shout out to those four mainly in the CAA conference. We got any more CAA news? Um, no. 